Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fundamentals. My name is Joan. I'm going to be working with you all on your fundamental uh, training. Uh, we're going to work through a complete design from beginning to end. At the end of the class today, we are going to have a complete project. We're going to put our hands on all of the stages or just about all the stages and um, just basically get a really good foundation on how the software works, um, how it's organized, how the stages work, how the shapes work. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what we want to do is open the software by double clicking on the icon on the desktop and that will open your home page. That's the page that I'm sharing with you now. From there we want to click on the button that says new and that will open our new project information screen. This is where we name our project, add our client's name, information. That's always handy to have that located in a central location. Uh, for today, we're just going to name our project and we'll name it Fundamentals. And then down at the bottom, click on Start Project. When you start your project, you go to Stage 1 Project Information. And in stage one project information, we pull in outside resources like GIS imagery. We can insert drawings and images. We can import AutoCAD files. We're not going to really work with any of these today. Uh, I'm going to give you all of the verbal instruction that you need to uh, complete the project, draw the shapes, etc. So um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how these uh, resources would help you in your day-to-day -day projects, you can actually go up to the top of your screen and there's a question mark that takes you to a help page for the stage that you're in. So when you have a question about something, uh, really handy to just click on that question mark, get help for the current stage that you're in. All right, so if you want to learn more about those uh, resources, that would be a good place to learn uh, how to utilize those. Now, again, today we're not going to be using those. We're going to be doing everything from scratch, um, but just kind of to give you just a little inform more information about how uh, stage one works, we have the imagery that we can work with or the files that we can import. You can set up your orientation and you can set up your environment. I am going to left click on the drop down arrow and show you some of those environments that you can choose from. And I think I'll go with mountains. I'm going to click on the mountain environment and that is going to show on the perimeter of my design uh, that there are mountains off in the distance. So it's kind of nice to be able to set up that environment to match, you know, where you are. Now we're going to move to the next stage so that we can start working with the house stage. Um, and so one of the most important concepts in the software is that you want to be in the right stage for the work that you're doing. So at the top of the panel menu, you've got your title bar for the stage that you're in. Also have some icons at the top that tell you the different phases of the software, like the design phase, materials, plants and trees, uh, finalize and construction. You know, we won't be covering the construction uh, stages today, but uh, they are covered in classes and videos. So um, you can you can learn about those uh, by taking the construction training online, or you can go to the help page again and see some helpful videos on how to work with your construction pages. All right, so go to that title bar and you have a previous stage and next stage button. That's a quick way to just move on to the very next stage. So I'm going to click on that next stage button and that's going to take me to stage two house. So we're in the right stage. We want to get familiar with the interface and what the terminology that we'll use for the for the interface. So we're kind of know where to look for everything. So in the middle where we've got the grid, we'll, we'll just call that the grid. Over on the right hand side, we'll call this the panel menu. I'll be very specific about where we're looking for things in the panel menu so that you can begin to acclimate to uh, how this how the program is set up. It's very similar in all the stages. At the top of the grid, we have our application bar. So when we're looking at something up top here, I'm going to call this the uh, the application bar. So before we get started, we want to make sure that we're set up ready for the you know for our objective. What is the objective? What are we doing? What kind of shapes are we drawing? We are drawing in the house stage typically straight lines, geometric shapes. 
And so our setup is very helpful for that objective. Um, go to the top of the grid and in the middle of the application bar, you have the word grid, left click on that. These are the settings for basically the spacing of your grid. How far apart are the grid lines? And what you choose here is just a matter of what is most convenient for you. There's no rule that says I'm drawing a house. I have to have a six inch grid, right? So whatever's convenient, if you're drawing smaller shapes, sometimes you'll switch over to a one inch grid. Today, we very conveniently have all even uh, dimensions on our shapes. And that's just for training purposes. I know in the real world, that's not how it works. But today, uh, it's going to streamline everything for us to have our grid set to a one foot grid, just going to work well with what we're doing. To the right of that, you have your snaps, go ahead and click on snaps. For geometric shapes for straight lines, we want all of our snaps and constraints on with a green check mark, and we want our angle snaps set at relative. That is an important setting for your success with, with geometric shapes with straight lines. If you have your angle snap set at none and you try and draw straight lines, you're gonna have to work a lot harder than you need to. We don't want that. We want you to uh, set that to relative so that you let the system keep that uh, line really nice and straight for you. All right, now we're going to slide over one more setting to hide and unhide. Go ahead and open your hide and unhide menu. Down towards the bottom, we have settings for guides and measurements. We have three options, stage measurements, selected measurements, or no measurements. I like selected measurements. Go ahead and choose selected measurements on yours. That way we'll all have exactly the same things. Okay, go ahead and click away from that. All right, so we're almost ready to start drawing our house. Uh, we also want to go over how to navigate in this 2D viewport. So the 2D area, the grid space here, I can zoom in and out with my uh, middle scroll wheel on my mouse. So if you roll your scroll wheel away from you, you're zooming in closer to the grid. And if you roll your scroll wheel towards you, you're zooming out further away from the grid. Now, if I continue zooming out, I can zoom out enough so I can see the entire grid. This is our drawing space. It is 853 feet by 853 feet of drawing space. Now, when you open a new project, the software puts you right here in the middle. And that's a very convenient place to begin drawing. And it's a convenient location because when you go into 3D to check your work, the camera is looking right here at the middle of the grid space where you've drawn. So the grid turns into terrain, camera's looking at the shape that you drew. And in our case, it's going to be the house. So that's just a good general uh, practice, right? Good, good rule of thumb is that you want to start drawing in the middle of the grid. Okay, one more navigation function that I think is very handy is to press down on your middle scroll wheel like a button and you get a hand icon. So that is the pan function. Press down on your middle scroll wheel and you can move the grid. We'll work with that a little bit more as we're drawing. It's very, very helpful to zoom and pan while you're drawing. If you need to zoom into something small or zoom out to something big. Okay, now also important is that you know that the focus of your zoom is where your cursor is. So you don't want to have your cursor kind of hanging out over here out, out in the middle of nowhere um, because that's where you'll zoom in, which is pretty counterproductive, right? So you want to make sure that you point your cursor where you want to zoom. So I'm going to point my cursor back in the middle of the grid, roll my scroll wheel away from me several times, and I'm zoomed back in. And now you just basically begin drawing in this general vicinity. There's no dot or marker or arrow that says, you know, start here. Just in this general area is just fine. All right, so we are going to begin drawing our house. And um, I'm going to activate my line tool to draw the house, to draw the lines of the house. Um, your toolbar is in your panel menu at the very top. 
There are eight main tools. If you hover your cursor over the tool, you'll see a description of what that tool does. And in the end, or at the end, you'll see a, uh, a letter in parentheses, and that's the letter on your keyboard, also known as a hotkey or a shortcut key that will activate that tool. We're going to left click on the line tool to activate the line tool, and we'll come back over into our grid space, and we're going to begin drawing. Just left click anywhere. And we're going to drag our cursor to the right. And as we move our cursor to the right, we extend the line segment. We want this first line segment to be 20 feet. So we're going to stretch that line over. And when we get to 20, we'll stop and left click. Now we'll draw down 6 feet. Same method, just come straight down 6 feet, left click. Come to the right, 20 feet, left click, come up 6 feet, left click. Now I'm going to need to zoom out or pan over just a little bit. I think I'll just pan. I'm pressing down on my middle scroll wheel like a button. But you can zoom and you can pan while you're drawing and the line, the active line that you're working with just kind of hangs out and waits for you to get in the right orientation. So we're coming to the right 26 feet. Let me get to 26 and left click. Okay, so what I've drawn so far is the back of the house. Now I'm coming up the right side of the house and I'm going to teach you how to use another method for drawing. You can drag your line and left click the way that we just did for the back of the house. You can also take your line in the direction that you want it to go and you can type in the value for the length of the line segment or in this case the wall. So we're coming up the right side of the house and the wall is 74 feet long. I can actually just take the line the direction I want it to go, look at my keyboard, type in 74 and then look at your cursor. You've got a little box that wasn't there before and it's got the value in it. 74 feet. I checked my work. I've got the right value. I'm going to press enter and I will have a 74 foot line segment. So you can either drag the line and left click at the desired length or you can type in the length. Okay, let's continue typing in the length. The front of the house is uh, up here. I'm going to turn to the left and I'm going to type in 20 feet. Now I'm going to come down 10 feet. To the left, 22 feet. Up 6 feet. To the left, 24 feet. Now, if you make a mistake, you can always undo. Right at the top of your screen, there is an undo button in the application bar. So if you make a mistake, you can undo. If everything looks good, we're going to turn the corner and come straight down. Now, I want you to notice, I'm going to pause here for a second. There's a dashed yellow line reading a path to where I began drawing. This is called the auto close function. The auto close function reads a path to where you started drawing, and it suggests that, hey, if you want to close your shape here, you can close your shape here. So if that is, in fact, the way that you want to complete your shape, a fast, easy way to complete it is to press enter. And that's going to complete the shape automatically for you. That's why it's called the auto close feature. Pretty handy. All right, now watch what happens if I move my cursor away. I no longer have that yellow line attached to my cursor. That is letting me know that I completed my shape. I met my objective with this shape. I connected back to where I started. And that is one of the most important concepts in the software is that you complete your shapes. If you don't complete your shape, you'll see red lines when you deselect your shape. And more importantly, when you go into the 3D environment, your shape's not going to be there. So red means you've got a, you've got a dysfunctional shape. It's, you have a disconnect or there's a gap or a space. There's something wrong with the way that shape was drawn and it will not render in 3D. So we want to make sure that we understand that. Now we're going to switch tools. We're going to go over to the toolbar and we're going to left click on the move tool to switch from the line tool. We don't want to 
start drawing something else. So we switch to the move tool and the move tool, I want you to get real familiar with that, with that uh, symbol on your cursor. Uh, the move tool is kind of your home base tool is what if, if I don't have another drawing tool or another tool activated, this is the uh, symbol that I'm going to see on my cursor. It does what the name implies. We can left click and drag a shape if we need to. I don't want to move this one, so I'm not going to, but I can also select and deselect my shapes, which is really pretty important. Sounds really simple, but uh, really important. If I left click away from this shape, it's deselected. If I left click on the line of the shape, it's selected. When it's selected, it's bright white, You've got your modification points on the corners and the uh, and the midpoints, okay? So when we have our shape selected and we look at our house tab, all of our house settings will be lighted. You can you can click on things. Everything's everything's uh, active. But if I deselect my shape, everything's all grayed out. So if you ever look over and you go, "Wait a minute, hold on. Where are my settings? How come I can't click on anything?" It's because you don't have the shape selected that corresponds to these settings. So that's an important, that's an important concept. Um, also, the middle of the shape, just grid space, you're not selecting anything in the middle, but the line, that's where you're going to select that shape. Okay, so with our shape selected, we're going to look over at our house settings. The objective here is to make the house look as much like your client's house as possible. They love their house. They want to improve their environment. Um, so what you really want, ideally, when you do a presentation for your client in whatever format you choose, you want them to look at that and say, wow, that looks just like my house. That is so cool. And they love that. They really do. It, it really means something to them. So that's where the emotional connection is. So these are the settings for helping you do just that. We want to set the height of the house. There are three symbols next to height. You've got one story, two story, and roof only. We have a one story house today, so we're going to click on that one story icon, but I'm going to increase it one foot. It's going to actually be an 11 foot structure just because we can. We're going to increase that to 11 feet. Now, this may surprise you, but I'm actually going to turn the roof line of this house off. We have an example today of a house that has a roof line that's slightly different than the base or structure of the house. And you know what? This is actually a fairly common scenario. It's a, it's a really common architectural detail on houses uh, where you have a shaded area, covered porch, covered patio. And so think about the roof kind of extending out over that shaded area where there's no structure underneath it. We actually, there's lots of, you know, lots of questions that uh, folks ask, ask about that. And so we decided to uh, teach that today. And the technique for making the roof line slightly different than the house is to draw them separately. And I've got some good little tips and tricks for making that work a little bit faster too. So um, this is just going to be the base structure of the house and it will be an 11 foot structure. So we'll come back to roof line settings here in just a minute. Um, below that, you will see some settings for your interior environment. When, when you're inside the house, if you choose to show your client uh, the interior perspective, like what does the outdoor environment look like from the living room or the dining room or the great room? It's really kind of neat to show them that perspective. Um, and, and see what their view is going to look like. Cause it's, you know, it's going to be a really pretty view. It's going to improve their view tremendously. So to have the interior wall on the foundation on the ceiling on, that's going to make that interior environment look a little bit more realistic. Okay. So, um, down below the house settings, you see object settings, auto elevation is turned on by default. That's the system putting things where it thinks that they need to go. Okay, and then object settings are for uh, mainly, as I'm looking at this, just the display, uh, like the font size. So if you click on that capital F for font, then your font options are going to open up and you can increase or decrease the size of your font. Okay, so that might be handy if you're having trouble seeing your uh, numbers, that will definitely help you out.
All right, I'm going to go ahead and click away from the shape and I'm going to go into 3D. The way that we navigate to 3D is at the top of the grid in the application bar. There's a toggle for 2D or 3D. We're in 2D, but we want to go to 3D. So I'm going to click on 3D and there's the top of my house. My camera is looking down from a bird's eye perspective. That's the defaulted camera location. Think of the grid turning into terrain and we're able to uh, navigate that terrain using our mouse. The right mouse button zooms us in and out. Hold down your right mouse button and slide your mouse forward and backward. Hold down your left mouse button and you can change the angle of your perspective. You can go from a bird's eye perspective to an eye level perspective. If you go a little bit too far, you're going to go underneath, which looks kind of uh, kind of crazy, but uh, I can pull it back down. So I'm just left clicking and moving that around or up or down. You can also use your pan function here. I use it a lot. If I press down on my middle scroll wheel like a button, I can pan the 3D, uh, basically pan the, pan the grid. It feels like I'm moving it left or right or forward or backward. Really comes in handy. I can zoom in and out. Try, try zooming and rotating and panning. Make sure all those functions feel comfortable for you. You're going to be using them a lot. And you know what? Uh, at first, you kind of have to think about things as you're working and learning. But uh, towards the end of today, at the end of the class, you're going to realize that it's already going to start to become muscle memory. and You don't even have to think about it. You're just going to automatically do it. All right. So we have our house. The back of the house is this section where we have the extended area. And then on the front of the house is more of an alcove where it sets back in. All right. So we're going to be working on the back of the house primarily, but we will do some things in the front as well. All right. So we've got a complete shape. We'll go back into 2D and continue. Go up to the top of your screen and where you had your 2D, 3D toggle there in your application bar, click on 2D. And that's going to take us back into the 2D environment. Now, I said before that we're going to have two house shapes. So we're going to use a method to make the second house shape without having to draw it. We are going to copy and paste the original house shape. So we left click on the shape to select it. I'm going to pan it over just a little bit, just pressing down on my middle scroll wheel like a button, panning that over. And there are two ways that we can copy and paste. The fastest, easiest way is to use your shortcut keys or your hot keys. Control C will make a copy of your shape. Control V as in Victor will produce the shape and you can paste it and drop it in. You can also select a shape and when you right click on that shape, you will see your right click menu are, is going to give you some really common tools and functions that you can use like undo, copy, cut, paste. So I'm going to click on copy. I'm going to right click one more time and then I'm going to click on paste. That's going to create a copy of the selected shape and I'm going to just move it over to the right, left click and drop it in. That's going to be my roof line. So just to keep ourselves organized, we're going to have house shape number one on the left, house shape number two on the right, house shape number one is our structure, house shape number two is going to be the roof line. So I'm going to select the roof line, house shape number two, and look at the settings. We want this to be a, a, uh, a roof piece that we're going to set on top of the structure. And this third icon that you see is called roof only. You might think that that's what we're going to use here because it sounds like that's what we're trying to do. But roof only is an open roof line and that's really not going to uh, work at all. So we're going to trick the system just a little bit and we're going to set the height of the house under this roof line to zero feet, one inch. So just a one inch house. Turn the roof line toggle on. The two pictures that you see next to the roof line toggle 
are ways to modify or manipulate the roof line in the 3D environment. So we'll come back to those. I'm going to set the roof pitch to 5 over 12. I'm going to set the overhang to 1 foot 0 inches. I think I'll increase the roof trim to 1 foot 0 inches also, just to change it up a little bit. Okay, the interior settings really just don't apply. They don't apply, so we're just going to bypass that. And then we're going to go down to our object settings. Now, object settings is where we set the elevation. So I'll come back to that when I get my house shape ready to move the roof line over. My idea is that we can put our doors and windows on our structure a little bit faster and easier or at least have our site references a little bit easier to see without the roof line. So we'll put the doors and windows on house shape number one, and then we'll move the roof over. All right, so we're going to select house shape number one, left click on house shape number one. Now, you do not normally have to have your house shape selected to add doors and windows. I selected the house shape so that I can show you which uh, line segments or which walls, let's call it walls, that we're going to attach the doors and windows to. So we're going to work with doors first, and we're going to put a door on the 20-foot wall on the right side, and another door on the 26-foot wall on the left side. I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to eyeball and set them in. Remember, we're trying to make this look like our client's house and we probably have a picture that we can just look at and aesthetically, you know, kind of align this with what they have. Now we're going to open our library on the left side of our screen. Find the library tab, left click on library, that's going to open the library panel. The panel opens to house decor because we're in the house stage. The system says, well, you know what? You're in the house stage. Let's uh, let's uh, provide some doors and windows, uh, garage doors, doorknobs, things that you would see on a house. There are 92 doors. Let's look at the subcategory list of doors. To the right of the number of doors, you're going to left click on that uh, white triangle and expand the subcategory list of doors. Choose the French style 96 inch door. And the one we're gonna work with today is the single with panes. All right, now I'm gonna kinda zoom in to the back of the house so I can see that 20 foot wall, that 26 foot wall. I'm going to left click on the single with panes to select it. And then I'm going to insert multiple because I want more than one. So down at the bottom of your thumbnail pane, you have two options for inserting objects. You have insert selected item one time or insert selected item multiple times. We're going to choose multiple. So we're going to click on multiple. And when we bring our cursor over, we're going to have a door attached to our cursor. Doors are set up and programmed to attach to the inside of the wall of the house. So you touch your cursor to the wall. Let's go with the right side of the 20 foot wall. See how when I touch my cursor, it snaps on? I'm gonna left click and drop it in. Now I have another door attached to my cursor. I'm gonna take that one over to the left side of the 26 foot wall. Left click and drop it in. Those are the only two doors that I need, so I want to get rid of the door that's on my cursor. To dismiss this door, I will right-click, and right-clicking will remove that door. Okay, so doors and windows are designed to attach to the inside of the wall of the house. They cut through, and they look really good. Let's see for ourselves. Let's jump over into 3D and just take a look at this. Make sure we've got our doors attached correctly. They look great. All right, next we want to add our windows. And we've got quite a few windows that we're going to put on the back of the house here. Um, so we're going to jump back over into 2D, click on the 2D toggle. 
we'll be putting two windows on the 20 foot wall. We'll be putting three windows on the extended area and we'll be putting three windows to the right of the wall on the 26 foot section or to the right of the door on the 26 foot section. All right, and windows work the same way, but we don't have a large library of windows like we do with doors. We determined a long time ago there are so many different types of windows that it would take a lot of windows in this library to cover all the different types of windows out there. So we created a custom window builder, and that's what I'm going to work with you on next. Go ahead and just uh, uncheck your door category that we were working with. Collapse the subcategory list. That's a good habit to get into. And go ahead and just close your library up for just a little bit. All right, get yourself in the right orientation to see the back three walls. Now over in your panel menu, see how I don't, I don't have my house selected, so everything's all grayed out. But down at the bottom, I've got a nice size button there that says insert window. Left click on that. When you bring your cursor over, you're going to have a window following your cursor, just a little generic window. Attach it to the inside of the wall on the far left wall. Okay, we've got that one dropped in and selected. You notice that the house turns green when we attach our doors and windows. That's a good sign. That means that those shapes are connected correctly. Okay, they're attached correctly. All right, with this window selected, look over in your panel menu. Below the insert window option, we're going to see window, custom window settings, window options. What kind of window are you working with? What, what shape window? Is it a standard shape or a specialty shape? I'm going with standard shape. I want the height of my window to be six feet, zero inches. I want the width of my window to be three feet. Okay, then I go down to the diagram or picture of the window. And as you cover your cursor or hover your cursor over the different parts of the window, you'll see a label describing what part of the window, glass and window covering. If you click on it, you'll see the settings for that part of the window. We want our glass on and we'll leave our window covering off. Now go to the outer part of the window. That's the window casing. Left click on the window casing. We have options for casing thickness, casing width. You can set that to whatever you think looks good. And then one more section, and that is the middle pieces, the vertical pieces in the middle. When you click on those, get my cursor exactly in the right spot. It's a narrow kind of kind of uh, place to click, but you can point your cursor and see where it says window panes and frame. Left click on that and you'll see a list of settings for your window panes and frames. So there's more pieces to the window panes and frames. So you have more settings here. My idea is that I'm looking at the picture of my client's house and I'm just looking at the window and the settings and I can see that there are three rows and three columns of glass. So I'm going to set my grid to three rows and three columns of glass. Once you have your window settings in place, uh, you can take a look at your window in 3D. Just make sure it looks okay. Now, we, we did that in the 2D environment because I knew what I wanted the settings to be. But when you're working on your own, if you have your window selected in the 3D environment, you can make all of those changes as you go watching the changes being applied as you're working with the window in the 3D environment. So for example, if I look at this and I say I want to change the number of rows and columns, I can do that. See, I'm changing those and it updates automatically. So I can aesthetically match that to what I see in the, in the picture of, the, of my client's home. That's going to be so helpful if you have a picture. I might go to my window panes and frame. Let me just uh, see what I've got here. Casing thickness, casing width, make that a little bit wider. I think that looks good. 
I'm really happy with the window. And you know what? I might want to use this window again. It's never a bad idea to save something that you make that you think you might possibly use again. So we're going to go back into 2D. And I'm going to show you how to save this window to the library. And then we'll insert several more. So saving items. First, you have to have your object selected. I have my window selected. Now I'm going to open my library. And down at the bottom left-hand side of the library, bottom left-hand corner, as far down as you can go, there's the Save button. When you click on Save, you get this Create New Template window that's going to pop up. And that is a way to organize the shapes that you save. Want to make sure that you save them to the right category. If I'm looking at category right now, mine's set to doors. If I save my window to the door category, I'll never find it again. So it's a good idea to put your, you know, put your eyes on that and make sure that you've got the right category. If it's not the right category, you can either left click on the drop down arrow and choose one of the other categories, or you can actually make your own if you wanted to. But since we have a Windows category that'll work great for saving our window, then under type, I'm going to give myself some good descriptive information. I'm going to highlight over what's there, and I'm going to change it to rectangle. That will help me know the shape of the window. And then the template name, I'll name it 6x3. That way I know the size of the window. Now, if I wanted to add more descriptive information, I have this larger window down here where I can add that information, but I'm good. I don't need to, and, and it's optional. Everything above description has to be uh, populated, but description is optional. We're just going to leave it the way that it is, and I'm going to go click on OK, and let's see what happens over here. I've got a rectangular six by three window there. I've saved my window a few times, so I just replaced and, and uh, created a new one. All right, this is the same window that we want to insert several more times on the back of the house. So we will kind of navigate this grid space so we can see the back of the uh, back of the house and we'll insert a window to the right of our first window, three on the extended area and three to the right of the door on the right wall. Okay, so left click on the window to select it, go down to the insert multiple and we're just gonna eyeball those in, just spacing the best that we can. And then we could adjust when we go into the 3D environment. Remember, when you're finished inserting multiple, you need to right click and that will dismiss the last item that you do not want. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close my library and I'm going to go into the 3D environment, kind of zoom out a little bit. I've got the gizmo on this last window. That means that I had that window selected when I go into the 3D environment. The gizmo is a move tool for the 3D environment. So when you have something selected that can be moved, you have three arrows. The blue arrow will move the selected shape up or down, the red arrow left or right, and the green arrow forward or backward probably don't need to move this window. It looks really good the way that it is. Um, and I wouldn't use the blue arrow because it's in the right elevation. And I wouldn't use the green arrow because that would actually detach it from the wall. But maybe the red arrow, I could left click and drag that over to the left or to the right. That might come in handy if you feel like, you know, uh, spacing is a little off. You double click on a window to select it and double click to deselect it. There's also a setting um, up at the top of the screen. There is a button uh, circle with the line through it and that will deselect any shape that you have selected.
I like to use that quite a bit. Okay, so we've got our doors and windows in, and the next objective is to move the roof over to house shape number one. We'll go back into 2D. So back in 2D, we are going to move house shape number two, which is just the roof, on top of house shape number one, which is the structure. That's our next objective. So we wanna zoom out just a little bit, kind of pan over so I have enough room to see both shapes. With my move tool, I'm gonna left click and select the second shape. And when I move it, I wanna make sure that I avoid the modification points. That will actually change the shape. If I just left click on the line of the shape, I can left click and drag and move it, put it on top of the house. Should kind of snap into place, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna zoom into a corner and make sure that my shapes are aligned correctly. I just point my cursor on that bottom right hand corner or any corner really, just roll your scroll wheel away from you and zoom in nice and close. Now I'm just a little off. See how I was a little off there? I'm gonna left click and drag that. Glad I zoomed in. I'm always zooming in really close. Check my work, make sure it's accurate. Um, when I'm zoomed in, I when I'm zoomed in, I have more control over my tools. I make fewer mistakes, and things just end up to you know be a little cleaner, a little more cleanly aligned, and I think that's a good thing. So that shape is now on top of the house shape. All right, so now we've got our shapes aligned, and the next objective is to extend part of the roof over what will be a covered patio. Down at the bottom, left-hand corner of the house is where that's going to happen. Okay, now, you, it gets a little tricky right now because we have two shapes that are aligned, sharing the same space. So how do we know for certain that we have the roof line selected? Um, if you look over at your panel menu, you'll, you'll see the settings for the selected shape. This is a one inch house with the roof line. That's that house shape number two. That's what we have selected. That's what we want to modify. So we're going to zoom in to the bottom left hand corner of the house and we're going to left click on the midpoint. That's the hollow point in the middle of the 20 foot line segment. When I left click on that midpoint, that line segment turns yellow. I'm isolating that line segment independently and I can stretch it or drag it down and I'll stop when the right side is at 10 feet. Okay, now make sure you have that shape selected because there's one more really important thing that we need to do to this roof. We need to elevate this roof so it's up on top of the structure. We go over to our object settings. That's down below the house tab. Our auto elevation is on. It puts things where the system thinks that they need to go. So everything has a defaulted elevation. If you want control of the elevation of a shape, you turn auto elevation off and you get this value box here. Define the elevation here. We want the elevation to be 11 feet, one, uh, 11, I'm sorry, 11 feet, zero inches. So 11 feet, zero inches. That's going to put it right on top of that house. Just you have to kind of pay attention to your shapes, the heights of your shapes. I just remember that we set up that house at an 11 foot height. So that's the elevation of the roof line. Let's take a look at it in 3D. Go up to your application bar, click on 3D. And there we have the roof line on top of the house and the extended roof over the area where we're going to have a patio here. That's going to be great. Perfect but we need a couple of columns supporting this roof. We can use house shapes for that. We just make narrow, small shapes, set the height, turn the roof line off. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that. Let's go back into 2D. I'm gonna use my rectangle tool for this shape. The rectangle tool is on your third row of tools. It makes four-sided geometric shapes. 
It can make rectangles, but it can also make squares, and that's exactly what we want to do. Left click to activate your rectangle tool. So technically we're not making a rectangle, but we are making a four-sided shape. We're making a square, a two by two square. Now we can set the rectangle tool up to make squares with the prompt on our keyboard. If you hold the shift key down and then engage your rectangle tool, all sides will be even. So I'm pressing control. I'm going to the bottom left hand corner of the extended section of the roof. I left click and I come up diagonally two by two, two feet by two feet, left click. So just the shift prompt, the shift key held down as a prompt for the rectangle tool to make all sides even. So that's how we make squares. Now that we have the shape completed and it's still selected, we're gonna go over to our house tab and we're going to set the height of this shape to 11 feet, zero inches. Go down to the roof line setting, turn the roof line off. One more important setting is down in your object settings elevation needs to be set to zero. This particular setting is going to default to what we did for the last shape, what we applied to the last shape. So it's defaulting to an 11 foot elevation would be pretty impractical for this shape. We want it down on the ground. So we kind of have to pay attention to, uh, to our values uh, because they will default to what we set to the previous shapes. So set that to zero feet, zero inches, or you could just turn your auto elevation on. That would also set it down back on the ground. I'm going to make another one on the right, just like it. I could copy and paste it over, but I want to practice using my rectangle tool. And uh, I know how to make squares now. I just hold the shift key down, go to the bottom right hand corner, left click and come up with a two by two rectangle or a uh, square, <laughs> left click, and that will create the same shape that you made prior to this one. So we should have the correct settings, but it never hurts to just check and, and look and make sure it's an 11 foot height. The roof line toggles off and auto elevation is on or set to zero. And we should have um, two columns when we go into the 3D environment. Let's take a look. One more thing we're gonna to do to the house, and this is very common. You know, you're looking at the picture of your client's house and you're assessing everything and everything looks good and then you realize, oh wait, the roof line is slightly different on your client's house than what you see on the defaulted roof configuration in the software. You can modify the roof. So the difference is the picture that I'm looking at, my hypothetical picture, right? Um, the client's roof line that comes and extends out over this patio, that section of roof is gabled. I'll show you how to gable that section of roof independently, or basically how to make a modification to the roof in general. If you double click on the roof to select it, move your cursor over the different parts of the roof. Each part of the roof is outlined in blue. So this is a section, this is, this is. In order to modify the roof, you have to have the section selected that you want to modify. So it's this triangular section on the end of that extended roof piece. I'm going to left click on it one time to select it. Now it's outlined in white. That's key. That's the important part. Now I'm going to go over to my house tab and I'm going to go to those two pictures that I talked about earlier. Right next to the roof line toggle, you see a gable icon, gable roof style. That's what we want. Go ahead and click on that. And that's going to take the pitch away. It's going to pull that uh, hip roof that was at an angle and it's going to take that angle or that pitch away and it's going to pull it straight up. Let me go up to the top here and click on my circle with the line through it to deselect it. And then I can really see what that looks like without all the, without all the highlighting. 
Okay, that's how we make a modification to the roof line. So the house is complete. I'm going to go back into the 2D environment. Have you noticed a prompt that pops up at the bottom right hand corner of my screen and your screen that says auto save, saving your work in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1? That's our auto save feature, saves our work every five minutes. But you know what? It's never a bad idea to just do a save. Anytime you feel like, you know what? I want to save my work. Look at the top left hand corner of your screen. And right next to the file folder, there's a little floppy disk icon, save current design. Just do a hard save whenever you feel like you want to save your work. But just know that the system is also saving your work every five minutes.